The funny thing is, when I started this video, I was actually gonna name five different features that were somewhat hidden within Unraid that I thoroughly enjoyed using and I thought everybody else should use as well. But as the video planning evolved, it turned into five things that I wish I used, but I don't. But I wish I do. Whether you're protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi, bypassing regional filters, or just simply wanting to download something without the worries of a government or a corporation not liking you for it, a VPN service is a must-have solution. And depending on where you're located, it could be hard to find a VPN fast enough for daily use. That's why the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee of NordVPN is so valuable. Because even though I can tell you I get great speeds and reliability, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. By visiting nordvpn.com slash byte or clicking the link in the video description below, you can test these speeds out for yourself with a heavy discount. And with 30 days to prove its worth, it's a safe way to ensure you're getting what you paid for. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Byte My Bits, and in today's video, I wanna talk about five features that I actually wish I used with Unraid. Some are built in, some you add on to it, but either way, they are very powerful features, and I kinda of regret not using them today. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know some of the reasons why I use Unraid. If not, the primary thing is going to be the parity. You get the most amount of hard drive space per hard drives just because of the way parity works on Unraid. I will link in the description below and in the cards above explaining Unraid parity and why I use it. Second thing is virtual machines. It's super easy to add virtual machines to Unraid. You can do this in other operating systems, but Unraid makes it really easy and it's just another thing to add on top of the server that just does everything at once. And that kind of actually rolls into Docker containers, which are their own little self-contained applications that are running almost like a virtual machine, but they're called Docker containers. And that's what I actually use for Plex. But the first feature that I actually wish I could use and is built into Unraid is the option to shut down your server when your UPS is low on battery. If you have a UPS, that means that if your power goes out or flickers or whatever, your battery will kick in and keep your things running long enough, usually for you to either shut them down or just not shut your stuff off if like you only lose power for a few seconds. And that's all well and good, but if the power actually does go out for an extended period of time, there's a lot of UPSs out there that have software that can install on things like Windows machines that can automatically turn off your computer if it senses it's going to run out of power. This is a good thing. That way you don't have a hard shut off. Well, Unraid has this option built into it as well. It can communicate with your UPSs. I personally wish I did use it, I just can't. See, I opted in for the cheaper, bigger battery option that had lesser features. I could add on the option to remotely monitor and manage that, it would just cost an extra hundred and some dollars. And I have not opted in for that, so here I am. No regrets. The second thing, and I actually can use this, just have not yet, is mobile control with your iPhone. It's the Control R software. I will actually display it on the screen. It's an application that allows you to remotely manage your Unraid server. From the screenshots, you can see it's very robust, has a lot of different features, and allows you to remotely manage your server. The app itself is only $5, and it's not actually a Lime Tech technology software. So it's not Unraid software, it's a third party thing. This feature can come in handy if you want to log in and reset things like your Docker containers. Let's say something's acting up and you want to be able to reset that remotely without remoting into your computer. And yes, you can set up your web GUI to be accessed from outside your network with a simple port forward, but still this app on your phone makes it super easy to use and I'm probably going to end up using it. For the third thing, I wish I would have set this up in the beginning is hard drive encryption. Unraid has the option built into it to encrypt your hard drives as long as you set it up from the beginning. Now there is technically a way, depending on how much hard drive space you have available, to move things temporarily from one drive and then set that up as an encrypted drive and then slowly but surely move everything over to encryption. Yes, I could probably do it. No, it doesn't sound like it's worth the time and effort needed for me to do it. It's just one of those things. I wish I would have done it from the beginning. That way, I wouldn't have to turn it down now because I don't want to put in that much effort. The next or the fourth feature is actually a feature that I knew about, I never used, and then now I'm like, I really should use that. I have it installed, I just have not actually used it to fix issues because I wanted to demonstrate what it looks like when you don't do it. And that is a plugin from the community applications called Fix Common Problems. Now, when you run this, you can scan for common problems on your Unraid server and allows you to identify and even gives you instructions on how to correct common problems. So as you can see from my server, it's asking me to install SSD trim software and maybe one or two things are out of date. You know, maybe three things 
are out of date. And last but not least, the fifth feature that I wish I had the ability to use because it could have made me having a Blue Iris server a lot smoother was hardware pass-through. Now with hardware pass-through, you can do things like dedicate a graphics card to a virtual machine, which is really good if you wanna do something like Linus Tech Tips did when he has all these different gamers on one machine. Of course, that machine was like a $100,000 machine but still you could pass through individual graphics cards or USB things directly to a virtual machine. And while I wish I could do this, unfortunately my Unraid server does not have any more room to add any more hardware. So that is five things that I wish I was using Unraid for. A couple of them I can fix, a few of them I just don't have an option for, but there's still great things for Unraid that makes it a very powerful operating system. If you have any questions on how to use any of these features, most likely those questions have been answered and visually walked through by a guy on YouTube called Space Invader One. I actually highly recommend his channel, mainly because every time I wanna learn how to do something in Unraid, I always end up on one of his videos. So. You know, I bow to the master in this video. In the description down below, I will link to his channel just in case you are curious on how to learn how to do some of these things. Also, you know, shameless little plug here, Unraid did send me a shirt, so I wanna say I will link to their merch shop as well. And thanks again, Unraid, for sending me the shirt. I like rocket it, it's cool. Well guys, let me know in the comments down below some features that you really enjoy using with Unraid, or for that matter, let's just open up the forum here. What are some features you would like to see with Unraid that we currently don't have and we cannot achieve with either a plugin or a Docker container? I'd love to hear your thoughts because I'm an avid Unraid user, so new features are always welcome just because I'm curious. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe below and have yourself a good day.